Welcome to Module 7 of the Insight and Pro Wi-Fi training course. In this module, we'll explore the most common types of troubleshooting that you may encounter. We'll also be checking out three use cases when Insight is being used to manage the network. The first use case is a large coverage area with a large number of users and devices. The second is a small coverage area across a large number of sites, so more locations in a single organization. And the last is a large coverage area with a large number of users and devices and a high mobility of endpoint devices, which refers to lots of people coming in and out of the building, causing a significant effect on things like lease times, ARP and host performance management. Anyway, we'll come to that later, but right now, let's once again have a quick reminder of the overall objectives for the course before we move on. Troubleshooting can be done the easy way or the hard way. Now, the easy way is possible as long as you have prepared a network plan beforehand. If you simply went into the project without doing some sort of basic design work first, then you'll most likely end up doing this sort of thing in front of your client. How are you getting on there, Bill? Okay, silence is golden. Oh, there we go. Hello, troubleshooting department. Oh, hello there. Oh, okay. Right, so you're not seeing the Wi Fi name or the SSID as we call it. Right, yeah. Well, we know it's set up at Insight. I wonder why you can't find that Wi Fi SSID in the list. Okay, I'll come and show you what to do. Think of a network design or plan as being the blueprint of the last time the system worked perfectly. If anything goes wrong, then you can reset the system by putting it back to exactly how your plan is laid out to see if that initially fixes the problem, which it probably will. Trust me, the bit of extra time it takes to prepare a network plan is well worth it. Tell you what, let's take a look at some common symptoms which may require your help to resolve. The first thing to check for are any network outages or disruptions which might be causing problems with roaming. Is the internet working correctly and are all devices powered up correctly? These really are the first things to check with any kind of network troubleshooting. Secondly, check the physical network is configured as per your design, because someone may have had their little hands all over it, little hands which don't have any networking skills, or worse still, little hands which think they've got more networking skills than they really have. Make sure your Wi-Fi device is within the range of the access point and there are no physical obstacles which might be blocking the signals, such as glass partitions, walls, or a large metal safe, which someone put in since your last visit. Check for interference, which might be causing problems, such as any electronic devices operating on the same frequency. There are a number of useful wireless scanning tools on the market to help you do exactly this. They do range in budget, so make sure you do your research first. Verify the router and access point configuration is using the same correct wireless mode and channel. Commercial offices can often be subject to many other offices around them using the same channel, and that can affect signal, especially if the neighbors have ramped up the power and signal bandwidth of each access point in an attempt to dominate the wireless space around them. Check to make sure the SSID is set to broadcast. It is possible to prevent this happening should there be a security purpose for doing so. And finally, always check for any errors or issues within the log files which may help you identify the problem. Hmm. Yeah, every time I click on that cursor there, I get this funny thing pop up. Um, never done it before. Ooh. Hang on, Bill. Hello, troubleshooting department. Ah, oh, hello, Mr. Turner. How are you? 
Very well indeed, thanks. Oh yeah, I've just seen your yeah, just seen your ticket pop up here on my state of the art monitor. Right. Yeah, it says you're not able to connect to the Wi-Fi name. So you see the SSID, it's shown in the list. But it, when you try and connect to it, it doesn't work, it doesn't connect. Hmm. That's an interesting one. Okay, um, I'll get straight on it and uh, we'll show you how to resolve it. All right, bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Authentication failure commonly occurs when the WPA security encryption settings haven't been correctly applied. If you have set the encryption to WPA Enterprise, make sure the username and password has been set correctly and that the certificate matches between the client and the RADIUS server. WPA Enterprise is widely used over WPA personal in business environments because it requires users to enter their own unique credentials in order to access the network, rather than a standard password. If these credentials are inaccurately entered, they will not be able to connect. RADIUS is a networking protocol which runs in the application layer and is used to authenticate user details. If WPA Enterprise is used, it's a good idea to obtain the logs from the client the RADIUS server itself, and the access point to help identify where the broken link in the communication channel lies. WPA Personal, or PSK, is simpler, and you're most likely to find the fault in an incorrect password or VLAN configuration setting. Oh, the state of this place. Oh, do you mind getting that, Bill? Bill? I'll get it, Bill. Hello, troubleshooting department. Hello there. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, no, I, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, I, I, I can imagine that is making you quite cross, isn't it? Yeah, tell me what's happening. You're not getting any internet access and you've checked the IP address. No, okay. So you see in the SSID, the Wi-Fi name, and you're connecting to it perfectly okay, but when you do that, there's no internet access. Right, okay. Right, yeah, okay, in the device user interface, it shows a connection, but there's no internet. Okay, it sounds like that's more than likely a sign of a missing IP address. I'll be straight with you and we'll uh, get it sorted. Okay, we'll show you what to do. Yeah, no problem at all. Grab yourself a coffee. I won't be long. All righty. Got to go, Bill. The first thing to check is the DHCP server to make sure it's correctly functional and, more importantly, you only have one of them active on the network. DHCP, or Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, is an application layer protocol which assigns IP addresses to hosts dynamically. Switches Routers and access points often include DHCP servers, so it's important to only allow one of them to operate on a single subnet. Your network plan should include all IP information for your hosts, as well as details of where the DHCP server is located and how it's configured. Next, make sure the ports on the switch are configured as trunk ports with the expected VLAN tag. If the port configuration is not correct, the packets will not pass through the switch. You can learn more about VLANs here on the Academy. Finally, if a RADIUS server is being used for WPA Enterprise Security, for example, make sure all access points on the network are on the trusted list in the RADIUS server. You're going to get that, Bill? Bill. Phone's ringing, Bill. Oh. Hello, troubleshooting department. Hi, hello, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So you're connecting to the Wi-Fi name, SSID. There is internet access, yeah. But it's like a low throughput. 
on the Wi-Fi connection. And you've checked with IT, my colleagues over in the IT, and they say that there's no throughput limitation set. Okay. I think I know what the problem is. I shall pop over and show you what to do. All right. No problem at all. Take care. Bye-bye. Throughput is the term used to define how much data is being delivered or put through a communication channel, in this case, a Wi-Fi channel. And you can see on this chart just how many Wi-Fi channels there are. You can learn more about Wi-Fi here on the Academy and you'll find a link to the relevant course on the resource panel below. We use the term channel utilization when describing the efficiency of any given channel and often express that as a percentage. For example, if the throughput of an Ethernet connection is 1 gigabit per second, and the throughput is 600 megabits per second, then the channel efficiency or utilization is 60%. The closer that efficiency percentage gets to 100%, the slower the throughput becomes. Good channel utilization thresholds to live by before performance is impacted are 80% maximum for 802.11 data transmissions, 50% for video traffic, and 20% for voice traffic. If you decide to manually configure your Wi-Fi channels, it is possible to fall foul of something called co-channel interference, or CCI. And this refers to incorrect channel planning, resulting in unnecessary airtime consuming. We therefore strongly recommend using a wireless LAN tool to determine which channels are being used by nearby wireless devices in order that you select a channel which is only being lightly utilised. Proper channel planning will mitigate CCI issues and maximise the channel utilisation, allowing you to assign the channel for each access point to reduce overlapping. Did you have a nice meal last night, Bill, at that posh restaurant? I'll take that as a yes. Hello, troubleshooting department. Oh, hello. Okay, yep. So you're having problems roaming around the building and your connection keeps dropping out when you do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I've got a colleague here that has a problem. I can't keep him still. Okay, that's fine. Um, I'll come over and help you resolve it. I'll come and show you what to do. No problem. Won't be long. In the olden days of wireless networking, roaming around a building often presented connection problems as the device dropped and reconnected to different access points. Today, though, roaming technology has massively improved. However, there could still be gremlins lurking, which cause your client to make calls like the one I've just had. The first thing to check for are any network outages or disruptions, which might be causing problems with roaming, including issues with the internet service provider, power outages, or anything related to connectivity in general. It only takes one access point to be disconnected to throw out the coverage of a large section of the building. Remember that design that you did, you know, remember the one that I made you do earlier, which you didn't really want to do, but are really pleased you did it. Well, the notes within that design are invaluable when it comes to troubleshooting, because for all you know, someone else has been messing about with the configuration and that's ended up causing these issues. There are, of course, some more obvious checks to be done, such as making sure your Wi-Fi device is within the range of the access point and there are no physical obstacles blocking the signals. Metal, of course, is the worst offender for blocking Wi-Fi signals, primarily because it's a conductor of electricity. Because radio waves are electromagnetic, metal has the ability to absorb them. Check for interference from electronic devices operating on the same frequency, and that might be causing problems too. A quick search on Google for a list of those devices can often help. And 
verify the router and the access points are configured using the correct wireless mode and channel. Using a wireless networking tool to check the signal strength of access points or the received signal strength indicator value on the client devices identifies whether there is enough differentiator between the primary and secondary access points. You're looking for an attenuation value of uh, probably less than 8 dB between the two. In module 6, we discussed how to configure the network for a high density environment, which should be considered if this problem occurs. And it's good practice to disable advanced features such as VPN or security features one at a time to see if any of those is the root cause of the issue. Finally, always make sure the router, switch and access points are using the correct up-to-date firmware and check for any errors identified in the logs which might point towards why this issue is occurring. Before we finish this module, let's refer to three use cases to see how Insight has been deployed across three very different environments. The first is a company headquarters with a high multicast rate of around 24 megabits per second due to the amount of video streams taking place. There are a lot of employees using the Wi-Fi in a single environment, so the high density rate control setting here will be 3 or 4. You can find more information about high density wireless network design in the resources section of this page. WPA Enterprise is being used for security, so a RADIUS server is installed, and this needs to include all switches and access points, and a guest SSID with security password is also in place, whereby the client devices are isolated from the rest of the network. Use case number two is a company called the Jouet Cafe, which is spread across multiple locations. Each location is small, requiring only one SSID for employees and another one for guest access. However, because it is spread across multiple locations, Insight Pro is used to enable an organization-wide SSID, which allows the SSID to be propagated throughout the entire company network and then broadcast at each location. Each location then creates its own guest SSID with a captive portal which can display promotional messages tailored to each location. The third use case is a smart home which incorporates four VLANs. The management VLAN is used for configuring and managing the system and therefore has full access to every host. The family VLAN is used for family members and close friends who want to be able to share content such as photos and media. The IoT VLAN is used for smart home devices such as IP cameras and network video recorders. And finally, the guest VLAN is used for guests who can only access the internet with bandwidth control. Finally, Insight contains a number of features which can help diagnose issues beyond those we've covered in this module. For example, enabling Secure Diagnostic Mode or SDM allows a support team to remotely debug the system and share diagnostics and log files to the email address specified. Insight maintains the client list including both the connected and disconnected devices, along with the details about the client MAC address, IP address, associated AP, the last time it was seen, authentication method and roaming history. All of this data allows a support team to quickly get to the root cause of the problem quickly. There are a number of other IP network, wireless LAN and packet capture tools to help identify problem areas. And you'll find a list of these in the resources section below. Don't forget to take the short quiz. And when you're ready, I'll see you in the final module of this course. Mm -hmm.